Scans are everywhere. They give us answers, they're quick, they're painless, they're safe, or so we think. But what if the answers they give come at a cost? And what happens when you've had one, five, ten scans over 10, 20, 30 years? I'm an NHS doctor and I've ordered thousands of them. CT, X-ray, ultrasound, MRI, for children, pregnant women, broken bones, cancer worries, you name it. And today I'm sharing with you what I know about their uses and their dangers and even how we weaponize scans. But first, I've got to share with you one of the most interesting survival stories you'll ever hear. It's 1945. Stomi Yamaguchi, a 29-year-old Japanese engineer, is wrapping up a routine business trip to finalize plans for a new oil tanker. But as he steps outside the meeting, the sky suddenly lights up. A blinding white flash, a roar that leaves him temporarily deaf, and a shockwave that throws him into a nearby field. In the local town of Hiroshima, a nuclear bomb has just exploded. Stomu somehow drags himself to shelter, and as he lies there in pain, there is one thought on his mind. He's got to make it home to his family. So 24 hours later, he boards a train, heading home to Nagasaki. He makes it home, but three days later, you know what happens. Stomu looks up into the sky, sees that blinding white flash again, this time just three kilometers away, another atomic bomb. Huddled behind a wall, Stomu somehow survives again. At this point, he's been hit by what's essentially 100,000 chest x-rays, just more intense. So what sort of damage does that do to his body? Infertility, deformity, cancer, death, survival. Before I tell you, it's important to show you what just happened to Stomu. So let's dial it back from 100,000 chest x-rays right back down to one. And if you've ever had an x-ray, you will have noticed this. You're told to stay still, it's harmless. And straight after that, the radiographers run out of the room behind cover and basically detonate the bomb. Is it really that dangerous? To understand, we have to go back to the first ever X-ray. German scientist Wilhelm Röntgen was alone at night in his lab studying the effects of electricity on this glowing tube when suddenly something weird happened. A fluorescent screen across the room started to glow up even though that tube was completely covered. Something invisible was getting out, something that could pass through solid objects. And when his wife placed her hand in front of the screen, they saw something nobody had seen before. Her bones, her wedding ring, floating inside her hand. This was the first ever X-ray image. They discovered something amazing to see inside the body silently, instantly, painlessly. And the world went mad for it. Shops popped up offering x-ray portraits. Shoe stores x-rayed your feet to help fit boots. People scanned their pets, their handbags, their brains, just for fun. It felt like magic. But then the injury started. Burns, ulcers, hair loss, fingers stopped working, and then there were cancers. So what was happening here? Turns out these magic rays were a form of invisible light called x-rays high energy invisible beams that can pass through skin, muscle, even bone and hit a screen or film on the other side. Here's the thing though, not all rays simply pass on straight through the body. A lot of them get absorbed by tissues or hit off certain organs and that light then leaves a shadow on the far end giving us that x-ray image. And here's the big problem. Those rays that don't pass through, they slam into your cells and rattle your DNA. And here's the problem with that. Think of DNA like a crucial set of instructions that your body uses to make new cells. X-rays are like spilling water on the page. Most of the time your body dries it off in time and the words are still readable. You photocopy it, good as new. But sometimes it gets a little bit smudged. Maybe still kind of makes sense, but then you photocopy it and photocopy that photocopy and on and on over and over the years, eventually the errors pile up, the instructions twist. And instead of a normal functioning cell, you're left with something distorted, changed, unrecognizable, a cancer. Now that might sound a little bit scary, but we're actually exposed to radiation every single day from the sun, from the ground, from bricks in the wall, from bananas, and it's completely normal. So a little bit of radiation is fine. Your body can handle it, but different scans use different levels of radiation. So how much is too much? Which scans are good and which scans are bad? Ultrasound is the gentlest of the bunch. It doesn't use radiation at all. It uses sound waves like sonar. It's safe enough to use on a developing baby in the womb, which is why it's the go-to in pregnancy. 
It's great at looking at soft tissues like the liver and the kidneys and the unborn baby, but it's not very good at seeing through bone or air. So it's not great for brain, lung, or bowel. So different situations need a different type of scan. Next up is MRI. It's also radiation free. MRI uses powerful magnets and radio waves to build incredibly detailed pictures of our insides. It's great for brains, spinal cords, and joints. The downside is it's expensive, it takes a long time, you have to fit into a small tunnel, and some people with certain implants can't have one. But what about the scans that do cause radiation? X-rays are the old faithful. Quick, cheap, brilliant for bones and chests. But they use ionizing radiation, the type that damages DNA in cells. The thing is, they all use different doses. A DEXA to look at your bone strength only uses about one day of normal background radiation. A chest X-ray is still tiny and only uses 10 days worth of background radiation. Mammograms are about six weeks worth, but it's when you get to abdominal and lumbar spine X-rays that I start drawing lines because now we're talking several months worth of radiation in one go. But what does all this mean? To put it simply, a chest x-ray will increase your lifetime cancer risk by one in a million. That's less than the risk of dying by lightning. So for most of us, the risk is tiny, but if you're having certain types of x-rays or lots and lots and hundreds of them, then the risks might start to matter. CT scans are like x-rays on steroids. They're super powered x-rays taking hundreds of x-ray images from all angles. With that comes a much higher dose. A CT of the head is the equivalent of about eight months worth of background radiation, whereas a CT of the chest or the abdomen is about two to three years worth of radiation. Let's put that another way. One CT scan can give you the same radiation as 200 chest X-rays. And the risk isn't just theoretical. A large UK study found that for every 10,000 children who had a CT scan, there was one extra case of leukemia or a brain tumor. That's one in 10,000, still small, but not zero. And the more CTs you have, the more risk builds up with time. But then someone must have had a very strange thought, thinking more x-rays means more damage and more danger. What if we ratched it up? Could we create a weapon? I don't mean a nuclear bomb. I mean something to target at parts of the body and cause damage intentionally. Radiotherapy is basically high dose radiation targeted at tumors. Instead of a quick snapshot like a CT, this is like holding a magnifying glass over the cancer and burning it with light. Controlled destruction. Now it is a blunt tool and it can't tell the difference between healthy cells and cancer cells. So there's always the risk of damaging good bits of the body. That being said, it does work. It shrinks tumors, it kills the leftovers from surgery, and it can even cure early cancers outright we're turning the same thing that causes cancer into a weapon for killing it. But let's go back. What does this all mean for Stomu, whose body was hit by well over a thousand years of background radiation in just three days? Remarkably, he went on to father two children and lived until the age of 93, despite having all that radiation. And although I think it's fair to say that scans and radiation are safe when used sensibly, this was a very peculiar case, and most of the people around Stomu at the time weren't so lucky during this very dark chapter in human history. And as for Rontgen, well, he found a way to harness this power via x-rays to peek inside our bodies, a technology we still use today, and in fact now can use to kill cancer. But at the time, nobody knew the harms of wielding this new power. And to a lesser extent, I wonder are we going through something similar today? Wearable tech is smart. Just like x-rays, it gives us that fascinating insight into what's going on inside our body. But I do wonder, like Rontigan, are we blind to the risks of this technology? Could they be doing us any harm? Well, if you want to find out, have a look at this video here where I tell you the benefits of smartwatches and also the risks that we're not thinking of. Thank you very much for watching today. I hope it was useful and maybe I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.